Hey guys, and welcome to the Animal Training Academy podcast show. I'm your host, Ryan Cartledge, and I'm really excited that you have decided to take time out of your busy schedules to come and hang out today. We're really grateful for you tuning in. And if you have been listening to the podcast for a while, we really appreciate this. Thank you so much. Hopefully you have subscribed so that you never miss an episode. But if not, or if you are new to the show, get yourself over to iTunes, Stitcher, AnimalTrainingAcademy.com or whatever it is you're listening to this podcast on and hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss a single episode. We are bringing you today's episode on behalf of the Animal Training Academy or ATA membership. If you like the conversations in these podcasts, then I want to invite you to continue them with like-minded people within the ATA membership area, which you can find out more about over on the ATA website. Within the membership, you can get access to twice monthly live web classes, the back catalogue of previous web classes, plus a huge library of videos and projects to problem solve different training situations and we're a sociable bunch with an exclusive private facebook group forums area and whatsapp chat groups it's like a netflix social media platform for animal behavior nerds but we will get started on today's episode where we will be talking to one laura Ryder. laura is the head dog trainer at morley vet center in perth western australia Laura is a certified professional dog trainer, CPDTKA, a Karen Pryor Academy certified training partner, KPA CTP, and a full member of the Institute of Modern Dog Trainers, the IMDT, and is also on the Fair Free Speakers Bureau. Laura has three passions when it comes to dog training. One, as a member of the Fair Free Speakers Bureau, she passionately brings low stress handling and fair free training to veterinary clinics, focusing on both the the physical and emotional health of patients. Laura is one half of the Institute of Modern Dog Trainers Australia education team, the IMDT Australia launched in January 2019, which is now. And Laura hopes to see it follow in the IMDT UK's footsteps, where it is known as the leading education provider for dog trainers and behaviorists in that part of the world. Laura also spends a lot of her time creating fun and engaging training courses for pet dogs and in 2014 saw Laura create the Canine Adventure Course, a non-competitive dog sport for the family dog to enjoy. The Canine Adventure Course saw Laura also travel to Las Vegas in 2016 to present at the annual APDT conference and additionally to London in 2017 where she presented it at the Institute of Modern Dog Trainers Conference. There are now trainers all over the world running their very own fun Canine Adventure Courses, which we're going to talk about later in the show, which for Laura means more dogs out there having fun with their families. Laura shares her home with her husband, daughter, her four border terriers, Wicket, Milani, Lando and Rogue, and her 30-year-old horse, Arnie. So without further ado, it's my very great pleasure to welcome Laura to the show today, who is patiently waiting. by. Laura, how are you? I am very well. Thank you, Ryan. How are you today? Yeah, doing fantastic. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to an uh, exciting 2019. Yes, uh, absolutely. Asking you if you were going to Peter Clark and Susan Freeman's event in April this year, uh, but you had first world problems. <laughs> you, could, I, I you couldn't get to that event because you have to go to Ken Ramirez's training ranch. God. I know it was, I know I, I could have fitted in both, but I, I, I just can't do it. No. So, so Ken, it is. Life is hard, isn't it, Laura? It is. It is. It's very <laughs> tough. <laughs> hey, Laura, let's get going and dive straight into the first question today. Could you please take uh-huh. everyone listening back to the start of your journey where you first learned about positive reinforcement animal training and share some stories about some of the first animals you ever trained using it? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I started working at Motley Vet Centre when I was 15. I started while I was still at school uh, as a kennel hand. So we have a big boarding facility at the clinic um, as well as the clinic itself. Uh, And uh, 23 years later, uh, I'm still there. Uh, It's an amazing place to work. So that's kind of where I started. Um, My boss, uh, Dr. Gib McDonald, is a vet behaviourist. So behaviour's always been uh, at the forefront of what we do in the clinic, which is wonderful. Uh, And 
so I was kennel hand um, for a few years at school and then started assisting with puppy classes um, in 2000. And um, I decided puppies were my thing. This is what I wanted to do. Um, who wouldn't want to, you know, days and days of spending time with um, gorgeous little pups. Uh, so at that time, Dr. Kirsty Sexel was traveling around Australia presenting her uh, puppy class workshops. Uh, and so I uh, followed her around um, and took in everything I could to learn more about, about puppies. Uh, and then she was um, a big promoter for the uh, Delta accreditation. So 2003, I headed off um, with my uh, little dog, Lockie, back in the day uh, and headed off and um, did the Delta course, uh, which was a great foundation um, for everything that I'm kind of doing now. It's where I really started. Um, I flew to Melbourne with little Lockie uh, and the first day there, I, you know, young, early 20s, very naive and new to the whole world and um, my little Lockie was running around having fun with a couple of the other dogs having a bit of an exercise that afternoon before we all got started and uh, there was a little yelp and he came running back to me with his back leg in the air and he anyway ended up he done a complete um, cruciate rupture completely gone on the first day so I was a blubbering mess uh, all worried about my little dog but uh, I, I think that really cemented to me as well that I was with my people um, everyone on the course was so lovely and so um, understanding and supportive um, and and got me through that tough time that as well as training the dogs it was the type of of people that that we were surrounded by and just um that really supportive that supportive culture um was was kind of what confirmed that this is what I wanted to do um so that was kind of the first first um bit that I did and then uh I kind of kept going and wanting to learn more uh and then I heard of uh this amazing vet behaviorist called um Dr Sophia Yin uh, and I was very interested in what she did and wanted to learn more. And, um, and sorry, I say vet behaviorist, she uh, vet first. Um, and so I, um, wanted to find out more about what she did. Uh, and so I was lucky enough. She traveled over here and presented for, um, the Australian veterinary behavior interest group. Uh, so my boss pulled a couple of strings, uh, so that I could attend with him. Uh, and so that was in Melbourne. Uh, and then the following, week she presented at the APDT in Sydney. So I kind of joked that I was, you know, a groupie of Sophia's. I kind of followed her and flew around the flew around Australia to see her. Uh, and uh, I, the things she did, you know, it was amazing. And um, I had the pleasure of being able to talk to her. We chatted at the conference dinner uh, and I felt like this, again, this fangirl. Uh, and she was lovely um, and just so warm and compassionate and uh, just, again, amazing things that, that she has done for for our profession uh, and one of my highlights uh, was the next morning she was about to present up on stage it was the final day um, and she came wandering over and said oh good morning Laura how are you and I was even that she just remembered my name uh, you know I was floored uh, and she said I thought you'd like to have this so she gave me one of her um, her hands-free leads so it's a belt that clips around and she go anyway so she gave me this lovely little gift and said oh thanks for following me around Australia I thought you might like to have this so I decided I would seize the moment in true fangirl you know hurrah finish it to, on a big one with her and I asked her if she would sign it as well <laughs> so the groupie in me I have a signed Sophia Yin lead which I will treasure forever um, so that's probably um, where I where I started um, I hope that answered the question <laughs> Yeah, and it's, that's cool. I don't think many people can say they've got a sign Sophia Yin lead. <laughs> yes, and uh, you're big. You're big on those on those moments, aren't you? Because you say that, and, and as mm. I'm talking to you, I'm looking behind you at the top of your shelf in your uh, office, and no one can see. <laughs> can you explain to everyone what I'm looking at? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so my little Lockie, he was a little Terry mix, little rescue pup. And, um, he was, he was my little heart dog. He started all of this with me. So he passed away a few years ago now. And I decided that I wanted something to keep, you know, something to always have with me. So it's an American company. Uh, it's called cuddle clones. Uh, and so you take a heap of photos of your dog 
and you send it over to them and they turn your, they make a teddy bear to look exactly like your dog. Uh, and oh, it's amazing. He's still with me. I use him as my little demo dog. He comes with me if I'm presenting and I have my little stuff locky. Um, and uh, it's a gorgeous little teddy bear and it looks so much like him. Um, but on the website, oh my goodness, not only do people get dogs, there's um, people have had their pet chicken turned in like, you know, let's make a teddy bear with my pet chicken. Why not? Uh, it, yeah, it's 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 really cute. And and does having does having him there make you think about where you got started? Does it make you think about going and doing your data certification? What what mm-hmm. what what is what is taking Lockie, not actual Lockie, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cuddle Klein Lockie. Um, Cuddle Klein Lockie. To your mm-hmm. uh, present presenting spots to to where you're gonna go talk. What is mm. what is that how does that how does that help you? Does it help you remember those memories and kind of where you come from or? Yeah, it does. I think it, um, it, it reminds me of that, that, you know, that naive, you know, young girl who started on these big adventures and I look out and to some of the people I'm presenting with, whether it's some budding dog trainers or some lovely vet nurses that I'm chatting with. And I see that same kind of enthusiasm that, and you know, I'm really pleased to be able to work with them um, so that they can have an amazing journey with what they want to do as well. I guess as the Sophia Yin lead, you you framed <laughs> the moment. <laughs> you framed the moment of getting it signed as as seizing the moment. Yes, uh, but but that, that that is a another piece in your collection uh, that mm-hmm. kind of remi- reminds you of of where you've come from. And I yes. guess I guess I mean I'm not speaking for you. That that was a question, <laughs> even though it didn't sound like one. Um, and so what what I, what I'm getting at though is. Seizing the moment wasn't just getting it signed, was it? It was kind of seeing it's this person you were following was in Australia. You said your boss pulled strings. I kind of feel like you probably had something to do with motivating uh, your boss to pull those I, strings. I may, I may have been twisting <laughs> his arm a little bit. Yes. <laughs> so, so seizing the moment is 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 like a bigger picture there of you just kind of fo- following the cookie crumbs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, I, I just thought I'd get you to speak to that more to people that might be in your spot. Uh, back at the start of their career, how how can how can they seize the moment? What 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 would that young Laura <laughs> say to them that was just so keen to go and and follow Sophia Yin around Australia? Um, oh my goodness, it's a really good question, Ryan. Um, I guess um, just just go out there and do it. You know, um, I was chatting with a friend recently uh, about saying that I was heading off to America to see to see Ken Ramirez this year, and she and she made the comment that back when we were in high school, you know, if I'd said to got into my career, you know, advisor, you know, and they'd said, "What do you want to do with your life, Laura?" and you know, I was like, "I want to play with puppies, please." Um, they they probably would have gone, well, no, you can't, you can't do that as a full time, like as a profession. You know, I don't think that um, it's something that you could, you know, that you can do just, and it's like, yes, you can. Um, if that's what you want to do and you have that love for animals, um, we're so lucky now. There are some great opportunities out there for, for us to, um, you know, become, an, you know, a dog trainer, you know, an amazing vet nurse, uh, you know, whatever you want to do, just absolutely seize the moment and, and do it. Yeah, I guess those career advisors wouldn't have been particularly good at seizing the moment if people if they if they were to tell you that you couldn't do something but I, but even in 2019 there's probably you know for someone wanting to get started mm-hmm. not necessarily people even even self talk and, and not necessarily people but circumstances saying you know mm-hmm. this isn't probably potentially something you could do but is it is it just a feeling is it just a passion or is there any, is there any actions people can take do you think um, yeah, absolutely. As far as actions go, I guess um, it's lovely that we're getting more and more um, courses, workshops, amazing people coming out to Australia. I know that when I first started, it was very much, and I am, I'm still traveling, you know, bring on Ken um, as we head over there. But uh, there's more and more things coming here to Australia. So uh, I think we're going to talk about it in a little bit. So Institute of Modern Dog Trainers launching here, um, I think is a great step forward. Um, so the people that do have that passion and want to work with animals, um, you know, there's more and more courses um, becoming available so that they can get out there and do it. And I feel like you came up with some pretty good um, slogans for business labels when you were talking there. <laughs> Puppies are our thing. <laughs> You'll find yourself <laughs> yes. with your people. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so I know. I should, you've written these down. I should write these down. <laughs> well, I think we'll call the podcast episode Seizing the Moment. How's that sound? I, yeah, that sounds great. Let's let's see if we can bring <laughs> yeah. everything we talk about back to that topic, Seizing the Moment. Okay. Okay. And, and, and you talked about actions about how to do that, which might be getting involved in learning opportunities. And mm-hmm. as you mentioned, we're going to talk about some of those today. But let's, before we move on, just tell everyone what you're doing in 2019 and maybe run us through what an average day looks like for you at Morley Vet Centre. Yeah, okay. Uh, so an average day at Morley Vet Centre. Um, it's a really big clinic. Uh, so we have eight um, vets on staff. Uh, we have just, I think we've just hit coming up to 40 staff members. Uh, so we have a, a wide range um, of right through. So we have grooming department all the way through to our boarding uh, and then obviously the, the clinic itself. Uh, we also have a tra- our training team. So there's myself and three other trainers. So we run um, a variety of um, different classes from puppies right up to we do pet dog agility. Uh, we um, we also kind of do, um, we get a few trainers in to do some fun workshops as well. So we have some, um, the lovely Fiona Cowie who comes and does nose work with um, our clients. They think that's awesome. Uh, and I guess an average day at the clinic, um, as far as what I do, I mean, uh, running classes, I also do all of our staff training programs. So when our staffs come in, a lot of their induction is, focused on behavior and training uh so right through from um being really fluent in body language to those handling skills that we're using every day so that's that's my role uh a lot of uh one-on-one consults as well so helping people having issues um you know with their pet dogs and uh as i mentioned uh, my boss is a vet behaviorist so he sees um a lot of consults he consults um, in behavior one day a week he's in surgery uh the other day um that he's in the clinic uh so um again supporting him um with the behavior cases that he sees coming through the doors as well sounds fun it is. It's a great place. It's a great place to work. There's a heap of us that have been there for well over 10, 15 years. So it, it's like it's like a big, crazy family. Awesome. So if you're out there wanting to yeah. get started and you're thinking maybe you can't do it, seize the moment, get involved in some of the things like we're going to be talking about today and, and maybe you can have as much fun as Laura has on a daily <laughs> yes. basis. Hey, Laura, for anyone that might want to get in touch with you or find out more about all the things we're going to go talk about next Mm -hmm. where is the best place for them to do that uh yeah sure so um, i'm on facebook so very welcome to flick me a friend request and say hello uh as well as that uh morleyvetcenter.com.au is the uh, vet clinics website that has all my contact details on there uh, as well as all of the resources we use um so we have a lot of we have a puppy parents page just dedicated to all things puppy uh and um a lot of kind of um behavior advice as well as what the vet clinic does so that's probably the two uh, and then there's also Institute of Modern Dog Trainers. So that is imdt.com.au. Uh, so I know we're going to talk a little bit about more about that, uh, but that is where to head to have a look at the courses that we've got up and running this year. Cool. So Puppy Parent Page, Laura's a Facebook page, Morley Vet Trainers, IMDT, Bear Free, which we're going to be talking about today as well, which is really mm-hmm. exciting. Yes, yes, um, absolutely. And we're going to be talking about the Canine Adventure course, your Canine Adventure course. Is that is information I, yes. about that available on the Morley page as well, is it? Yeah, so it'll flick through to that, but you can find it at, and it's all one big word, canineadventurecourse.com. Awesome. So the C C A C. We'll link to all of us in the show note. Hey, thanks for sharing everything so far, Laura. I love hearing about what we call here at ATA people's behavioral odysseys. Mm-hmm. Moving forward, though, your behavioral odyssey continues to get exciting in 2019 and beyond. And one of the things mm-hmm. we've mentioned numerous times already is the IMDT coming to Australia. You guys, you Fiona yes. Cowie and, and a few other people over that side of the world, that side of the world, the same side of the world as me, but much <laughs> bigger location. Uh, you're doing some really exciting stuff over there. 
So, but uh-huh. let, let, we're going to talk about this, but let's go back just a little bit first. For the people listening to the show who might not have heard of IMDT and wonder what the heck we're talking about, can you explain what yeah. it is and, and what it does and then bring us up to speed of what you guys are uh-huh. doing and have planned on Aussie? Yeah, perfect. Uh, so IMDT is Institute of Modern Dog Trainers. Uh, it was created in 1999 um, by the amazing UK trainer, Steve Mann. So he is our head honcho uh, and is an amazing leader. Uh, It is now, um, over the years in the UK, uh, it's become the leading education provider for dog trainers and behaviourists. They also are travelling quite a bit through Europe. Uh, Steve heads down to South Africa every year and does quite a lot there. Uh, And he was out here uh, last year in Perth. Uh, I also was invited, That my I guess my introduction to IMDT was I was invited to present at their annual conference um, in London about my my canine adventure course uh, and so met the team I say team it's a family met the family over there uh, and uh, over the last six months or so um, so Fiona Cowie and myself have been working with um, Steve Mann uh, to bring INDT here to Australia in 2019 uh so how it runs um i guess why i love the imdt i'm going to keep calling it family because it is a family uh it's a really um supportive team of skilled professionals uh and um i think the culture that steve has created um is is second to none um it's it's a it's a really really supportive organization uh and there's such a wide variety of courses right through from um, a budding trainer a young vet nurse wanting to learn a little bit more um right through um, to, you know, professionals that have been doing it for a long time but want to upskill, learn something new um, and, and kind of add to their toolbox. Uh, so what we do, we have uh, a lot of courses uh, starting here. It's all um, starting in Perth for 2019 with plans, hopefully, to head over over to the East Coast um, next year. Uh, but hopefully some East Coast people might like to come over to Perth, come, you know, check out the other side of Australia and come visit us and do some things here with us. Uh, so, or maybe even from New Zealand. It's not that far, Ryan. Um, so uh, what we do, we have some one-day courses. Uh, so we have uh, Perfect Puppy, which is actually uh, running um, this coming weekend, actually. So a bit excited about that one. We have a, body, a one-day body language course. Uh, there's a Loose Leaders um, course, which is about teaching, uh, obviously, trainers to then it's a Train the Trainer um, workshop uh, and a Happy Recallers. So they're our one-dayers um, and they're open to anyone. So anyone Anyone can come along, learn something more. Um, Who doesn't want to learn more about puppies? I do. Um, And then there's also the uh, qualification pathway uh, that um, budding trainers can choose to follow. Uh, So the qualification pathway sees them attend. uh, So we first off have our two-day career as a dog trainer course. This is a really theory-based course. Uh, and then we have our four day practical instructors. Uh, and I, I'm really passionate about this one, uh, because what I've found with the four day practical instructors course is that yes, it's very much about training the dogs, but there is a really strong component about teaching the people. And I think that as, as, as professionals, um, if we don't have the people skills, we're, we're not going to, um, inspire and educate that, you know, the community out there. So, um, the people skills is, is really nice that there's a strong focus on that. Then once they've done um, those, we're encouraging them to get out and about. There's lots of recommended readings, shadow classes, uh, you know, and learn as much as they can. uh, And we're there to support them through their whole journey. Uh, Then there's the membership assessment. So they come back to us once they're, you know, confident and well, confident as you can be, as you're about to take an assessment. Uh, And the membership assessment, how it works is that there is a, a theory exam first up. Then there is a group class assessment. So it's a 20 minute group class. Um, You choose what you're going to teach. We're just assessing on how you're um, teaching it, uh, how you're kind of running and managing the class. Uh, Then you do a one-on-one puppy consult and you also do a one-on-one rescue consult. So all of those are included in the uh, assessment. And then at the end of that, um, you can then apply for your principles of dog training and behavior certification through the Open Colleges Network. So we help you through all of that process. 
Uh, and the exciting bit, you also get to um, become part of the IMDT family. So we have uh, both student and full memberships. So for a student membership, you're getting between 60 and 79%. Um, so we, uh, you know, it's lovely to include, you know, the budding trainers that are starting off on their journeys and, um, and they stay with us and, and keep learning. Uh, and full membership is 80% or higher. So there definitely is a, you know, a really a quality base there that we've set a, set a higher standard. Um, it's not just pass or fail. Um, you, you need to, to know it. Um, and so then you can, you know, become part of our IMDT family, um, which is growing and growing, which is lovely. Um, the other side of it for those that are already out there training, maybe you've been doing training for years, but um, want to add, you know, add something else, learn a little bit more, um, they can for their membership, uh, just sit the uh, membership assessment without following the whole qualification pathway. Uh, and so again, we have had quite a few trainers now who, again, want that, you know, that membership to, uh, and they've done it that way. So how do people seize the moment? So they go to the IMTT website and they, they get registered for all these things and are we allowed to talk about these upcoming events in 2019 or are they a little bit hush-hush at the moment? Yeah, no, I, I have been given the green light that I, I'm allowed to talk away. <laughs> do it. <laughs> yes, yes. What do we have absolutely. to look forward to? Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely we can seize the moment. So we have all of those courses are running here in Perth um, so they can absolutely head over to the imdt.com.au, head over to the website and everything is there. The bookings um, are ready, they're waiting to go. Uh, as well as that, so uh, Fiona and myself are running Steve's courses here, uh, but the man himself will be over here this year as well, which is very exciting. Um, so IMDT have some um, amazing um, trainers all over the world now, as, as we've spoken about, uh, and some of the big names too. So we have, um, so 3B events have IMDT um, members. So John McGigan and Sam Turner are coming out to Perth and then over to uh, Melbourne. And I believe, uh, I better check my notes so I don't get in trouble. It is April 2019. So really soon they will be landing on our shores. Uh, and so all of those ones will be booked through 3bevents.com.au. Um, but again, um, lovely IMDT family members coming over to Perth. And then we also have later in the year, uh, we have uh, Steve Mann coming over. Uh, we also have Robert Hewings, who is an IMDT, um, but is also from UK College of Scent Dogs. He's, he's amazing. Uh, very excited about him coming out. Uh, and also IMDT uh, member David Bryce, who is a behaviourist and um, I feel self-confessed complete dog geek. Uh, so they are all landing on our shores uh, in September and October. So they will be coming here and running um, quite a few different courses uh, in Perth, Adelaide and Melbourne. So the events are busy um, working with IMDT, getting the, them all throughout Australia. So really exciting things happening for 2019. And so you went, you went over to the IMDT conference in 2017, right? Which is where you said you'd meet the family. And so yes. it's been pretty fast moving, would you say, to kind of be where we are in, in January 2019? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just, um, I think that was the lovely thing about IMDT. You're just, um, you know, I was just welcomed with open arms, which was, which was lovely. Uh, and then I think it was um, then having them, the family travelled out here. So we had uh, Steve, John and Sam um, come out to Perth uh, last year. Um, and so, again, I spent quite a bit of time with them. I, you know, we went out and about and had lots of fun and um, travelled around and they saw the sites like you do when family visits. Uh, so, um, so it just all kind of snowballed from there. And you can listen to some previous episodes from John McQuigan and Sam Turner uh, in the archives of the Animal Training Academy podcast show. So make go, make sure to go check out those sensational human beings and maybe some of those other names will be coming up in the future. Keep your eye on the show. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about this family a little bit more. Do you think Do you think that the familyness? It's a label. We're going to have to unpack what that looks like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do, you think, do you think that familiness is what leads, has what is, is something that has contributed, I should say, to the IMDT success? And, and as I said, 
unpack this label for us. What, what, is, what does being family mean? And is, is that an important component of the success of IMDT? Um, yes, I, I think so. Uh, I think that um, I guess what family means is that everyone can have different ideas, different opinions, but there is still that same, that same passion uh, about what we're doing. And so there's often, so we have our IMDT, um, you know, our little Facebook, um, you know, our close groups and their lovely supportive group, but there's great questions that are raised uh, and there's never, you know, and it's, it's Facebook and there's no negativity, which is lovely. Uh, It's, it, you may have a slightly different take on something, um, but that's fine and let's chat about it and let's discuss it um, and let's be supportive of each other. Um, so I think that, I don't know, I've been drawn towards those kind of family places. Um, Morley Vet Centre is very much the same. Um, you know, uh, it's very much we all have different ideas and that all comes together, um, but we can um, discuss them. Um, it's not a, well, you know, we say family, there's dysfunctional family too, but, you know, um, Morley Vet Centre as well as IMDT, I feel it just that really lovely support supportive open place where you can say what you feel that's awesome i love that being on facebook and (laughs) (laughs) um and so another thing you talked about there that you said you're passionate about is did you call it looking at my notes here it was the one about training people practical instructors yes yes what was the name of it? Becoming a Practical yeah. Instructor. Yeah, so it's the four-day Practical Instructors course. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about this one. We've talked about all of the all of the offerings that are available to Australians and, as you mentioned, beyond. Uh, but let, yes. let's focus on one of the courses that you said you're passionate about, and this is the Practical Instructors one. Before we move on to our next topic, can you just give everyone four four things, four top things that they might learn in that four-day that was accidental. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Four things I'll learn in a four day course. Practical mm-hmm. instructor yeah, course. Okay. Um, I guess the biggest one is the confidence to be able to get up in front of people and present. Um, I think most of us as animal lovers, uh, there's, there's a, we can be a little bit of an introvert. And so when we have to stand up and talk in front of people, that's often, that's the scariest part. You know, I, I still feel like that. I'm like, give me a puppy. I, you know, let me train a puppy. But if I'm to get up and talk in front of people, um, I love doing it now. But when I first started, oh my goodness, I was terrified of it. So I think that the practical instructors course, again, um, you are teaching um, other students. And so everyone rotates around and takes turn teaching different exercises in the class then there's lots of lovely feedback um, from that and so I think for me that's that is the big one uh, getting the confidence to be able to present in front of people because you do you have to stand up in front of a class you have to talk to clients so you need those people skills so that's number one okay number lots yeah I'm like okay which ones am I going to choose um I guess as well as that the fact that you see other students training so you're not training on your own learning new skills on your own I'm going oh I wonder what other people are doing uh there's a really um nice way of you know someone might teach an exercise in class and then the next student comes up and they teach the same exercise but it's with a slightly different twist on it Uh, and so I think that it's a nice way to be looking outside the box because as we know we need you know lots of tools in our toolbox because for it may not work for one client and and one dog um, but oh I've got something else I can pull that out of my toolbox and this is going to work for them so just the sharing of knowledge even within the students um, is is lovely to see Um, Oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, what else am I going to choose? Um, the other one as well, I really like, and I guess I've, I've always been of this mindset and I love that IMDT is, is the same. Uh, a lot of the uh, exercises that we're training, it's about making sure that it's engaging, like turn it into games, make it fun. Um, so that the client is enjoying themselves, the dog is enjoying themselves because if they're enjoying the training, they're going to do it. Um, if there's lots of repetition and, you know, waiting around and um, we, we can lose that. We can lose that client and we can lose that motivation um, and, we, and then we can't help them. So I think that uh, a lot of the exercises that are taught, um, it's about having fun, which is lovely. 
Um, and then I guess the last one with the instructors, uh, with the instructors course, uh, is that there's, I have a lot of people who, you know, they want to come and become a dog trainer, but they may not have a dog who is suitable for a group training class, you know, and often that's why they've started their training journey. They may have had a problem dog, um, and that there's a passion sparked there. And so, uh, even though, um, and so they feel they're restricted. They may not be able to come. And how can I learn to be a dog trainer when I don't have a dog that I can take out and about into the big wide world to to learn these skills. Um, but, uh, with the IMDT course, uh, your, if your dog isn't suitable, you know, that is absolutely fine. We support that. We want the best for the dog. Uh, and so, uh, we have, um, I take my four, if anyone wants a border terrier, give me a shout. Uh, we also have some lovely trainers around Perth as well, who, you know, have dogs who, you know, just, happy being, you know, stooge dogs, they're happy to come along, help out, get some loves from someone else. Um, and so people can learn, um, and then go and take that home to their dog. But then also, you know, maybe that's, they've, that passion has started. They're going to now be a dog trainer and go and help other dogs like the dog they have at home. I think that's my four. So number one (laughs) was confidence. Yes. Number two, you get to learn within the family. Yes. Number three was, was it fun? Did you say? Yeah, fun exercises, fun games. And number four is you can learn even if you don't have your own dog. Yes. You summed it up beautifully, Ryan. (laughs) (laughs) I was worried because my notes got all scrambled there. (laughs) Hey, everyone listening, seize the moment. Get involved. If you're in the area, you can go to the imdt.com.au website and find all of the information there. But maybe you're in Barcelona, I don't know, somewhere else in the world, and you're not so close. There are going to be other opportunities in your region. So seize the moment as Laura Ryder has taught us today, as she did when Sophia Yin came to Australia. And hey, you might leave with your own signed <laughs> lead <laughs> from so- someone. I want to say uh, a massive... Um, shout out to Fiona Cowie, who you mentioned there, for putting you and me in touch mm-hmm. in the first place, yes. Laura, uh, and, and has also been very actively involved, hasn't she, in everything you've just talked about? Yeah, she does. So she's part of the 3B team as well as the IMD team. So she has lots of family. Uh, and, uh, yeah, she's doing some great things, um, especially bringing out some amazing people out here to Australia. Yeah, and I was sitting there going, I just booked my tickets to Susan and Peter in April and going, oh, well, maybe I need to change my tickets. (laughs) (laughs) And maybe you came up with the other name for the podcast and everything you just offered us then, Laura. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want to learn more about puppies? Who's not going to listen to that episode? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) <laughs> hey, fantastic. And thank you for sharing all of that. That was so much fun to learn about. For our next question, I want to talk about Fair Free, something else which has really fast momentum from when it was first mm-hmm. started to where it is now and the recognition uh, and the amount of family members it's picking up. Mm-hmm. For those that are listening, though, that might not have heard about for Fair Free, before you um, go into some of the exciting stuff we're going to talk about, can you please just give a quick overview of what Fair Free is? Uh, and then we're going to discuss some of the exciting new certifications that listeners of this show might want to seize the moment with uh, and get involved. Yeah. But take us back to the yeah. start. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so Fear Free is an online certification program for, it was originally um, just for veterinary professionals. Uh, it was an initiative created by Dr. Marty Becker. Uh, and uh, really what we're doing with the online certification is that we're focusing uh, not just on the physical well-being of um, patients coming into the clinic, uh, but, o- but also that their emotional well-being. Uh, so the online course uh, gives lots of tools, protocols, procedures, guidelines, um, everything you can think of, uh, really. And what we're looking at doing is to reduce fear, anxiety, and stress in patients. Um, and the added bonus of that, if we're res- um, reducing that in our patients, uh, it's also reducing fear, anxiety, stress in clients. Uh, it's definitely one, and I've seen it firsthand at Molly Vet Center, that it it changes it changes culture uh, in the start. Uh, there's more um, staff satisfaction because, you know, we get into this industry because we love animals. Uh, so it's a really lovely, um, lovely thing to, to now have available. 
so that is how it first started. Uh, once you become a Fear Free certified uh, member, uh, then we also have, uh, like you have, uh, we have our podcasts. Uh, so we have, uh, which again, I'm a podcast nut. So I'm, oh, I'm like, which one, which who am I going to listen to today? Uh, you know, uh, so who on my drive, who's, go, who's going to be playing? So uh, the podcast series is available. Uh, there's also a really great toolbox available to professionals as well well, uh, which really is about um, education. So educating uh, our clients. Uh, so again, there's posters, uh, flyers, lots of little uh, little videos we can play. Uh, again, teaching those um, pet dog and pet cat owners that come into our clinics uh, about body language, what fear and anxiety and stress looks like. Um, what we are doing as a veterinary team to reduce that, uh, but also ways that they can help as well um, to make their pets uh, visit to the vet clinic um, as fear-free as possible. And so it's been going for a couple of years now, but there are some new developments. Mm -hmm. Can you tell the listeners what they are and how they can... <laughs> you're, you're sick of me saying seize the moment now. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it was coming, yes. <laughs> how they can seize the moment with Fear Free in 2019. Because a lot of people have already done the, the first certification, haven't they? Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, yeah, vet, vet clinics are, uh, yeah, absolutely. Lots of nurses and vets um, jumping on board, which is, which is wonderful. Uh, so what's happening next? Uh, so there is now the Fear Free Trainers Certification. So this is a certification where what you need to do, first of all, is that there is an online exam. Basically, it's testing your knowledge. So it's not a online course to become a dog trainer. It's assuming you are, you, you're a skilled trainer. Uh, but what we're doing is we're then giving skills um, to be able to help as much as you can working with the veterinary team uh, to help when our patients come into our care. Uh, so there's uh, an exam. Also, uh, you're, um, it's all on the website. You can have a look. There is a list of qualifications that they see as, you know, um, the gold standard for trainers. Uh, so you need to have um, got a, a qualification as a trainer. Uh, if it's not on the list, uh, you can absolutely email them because obviously it is uh, an American-based um, company to start with, but spreading throughout the world very, very fast. Uh, so there are some courses that they haven't yet heard of, but they're very lovely and open to hearing about what course you've done and they'll have a look into it and go from there. Uh, and then what we're doing with the, uh, once you've done your exam and sent them through uh, that you have, you are, you're a qualified trainer and you're ready to go and learn more about Fear Free. Uh, again, it's an online course. Uh, so there's six, module, six modules um, that you work through uh, and really it is. So I'll just um, really quickly name them. That way they've got a nice idea. Uh, so module one is fear-free efforts to prevent and alleviate fear, anxiety and stress. So it's really an overview of what we're doing with that fear-free. Module two is fear-free from the home to the hospital. So concepts to employ during trips to the vet. And again, as trainers, we can help with a lot of that. Module three, trainer services to remove the scare from veterinary care. Module four, cooperative care. Module five, uh, duration stationing and active participation behaviours. And module six is putting it all together, so bringing it full circle. Uh, and so it's a really great online course. Uh, a lot of the videos um, are from the amazing Shirai Patel uh, and also Lana, Laura Monaco-Torelli. So they are involved working with the vet behaviourists at Fear Free, putting it all together. So uh, a really, really great course um, for that one. The other one, which has just launched like, oh my goodness, two, three months ago now. So it's a very, very brand new one uh, is the groomers course. Uh, and so again, grooming, you know, um, being like dog training an unregulated industry. Um, it's a great course um, for groomers to be able to come and, ha and have that certification. Uh, so what they're doing is using fear free concepts to ensure the grooming experience is as enjoyable as possible um, for every pet that comes in to visit them. So whether it be a young puppy who's never been to visit the groomer before, how we can set them up for their first positive experience um, right through to an animal who may have had some bad experiences in the past and maybe already showing fear, anxiety, stress um, signs and ways that we can help, help to reduce that. So the groomer's course is now available um, online as well. They're pretty exciting. So 
a training one as a, a trainer, uh, not groomer, although there's a ton of <laughs> groomers that listen to the show, which I'm super excited about. Uh, we've got Fear Free FX, Fear Free from the home to the hospital. I like the name. They sound, they sound catchy they as well, do, don't they? From they, the home they to the hospital. Catchy. Yeah. <laughs> it's clever. <laughs> um, trainers, services to remove the scare. Remove the scare. Like cooperative mm-hmm. care, training and participation. I didn't really get the full title of that one. I can't write fast yeah. enough. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> and, I'm and, talking too fast. <laughs> and well, if I could think faster and write faster, you wouldn't have to worry about that. <laughs> putting put and then putting it all together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and videos from past podcast guests like Shrag and Laura Monaco Torelli, who we treasure here at ATA because she's doing amazing yes. things. Um, so make sure to go check out those episodes, everyone, if you haven't already done so. So all of these certifications, they're all, they're all kind of, I'm assuming, tied together to the, the core central theme, which is reducing stress and anxiety for animals as well as humans. Yes, absolutely. Yep. So it, it, there definitely is a central theme. Uh, initially, um, so I first as a trainer went and did the veterinary professionals course. Um, and so we had a lot of people doing it that way. Um, but they decided to branch off and, and specialize and just have the trainers course for trainers, you know, and, and so make it about them and the skills that, that they can offer, which is lovely. You know, we can do so much. Um, and I think it's also lovely as well within the course, uh, you know, there's lots of different ideas that we can take away because we have to obviously um, treat the patient in front of us is what our veterinary teams are doing, but also each client. So whether it be a client who's really proactive and wanting to do as much as they possibly can, um, you know, there's lots of skills we can teach them to set their their pet up for success Um, right through to the client who's only just starting their journey on understanding, you know, uh, you know, oh, body language. Oh, is that what that meant? Or, you know, that they're just learning. And so, um, trying to, um, inspire and motivate them, um, to, to learn a little bit more about their pets. And you mentioned Fair Free, originally created by Dr. Marty Becker, which, yes. uh, which thanks to you, Laura, we've initiated. I know. Well, hopefully he there's a conversation. It started. I hope he is on your podcast very soon going to hear it from the the man himself the inspiration the story uh that led to this world changing uh movement can i use the word movement yeah i say you can (laughs) fantastic (laughs) yeah (laughs) really looking forward to that one fantastic so let's move on because we've still got a ton of really exciting things we want to talk about but if you want to learn more about these certifications where specifically should people go just to the main fair free website laura or is there a more specific home and location and is fair free on social media what's the best place to yeah absolutely so yeah fair free um you can absolutely find um on social media but you can so fearfreepets.com uh so that has all the certification programs there so there's you'll just see there's the drop down options for the different courses um, and you can go have a look around and um, and see what is best for you Uh, as far as for the pet owning community they also have their fear free happy homes website so you can um, absolutely send clients that way Uh, some really nice resources there um, for our um, pet dog pet cat families out there Love it. And once again, we will link to all of this stuff in the podcast write-up if you uh, go to the ATA website and you want to uh, land there from the ATA website, then you can head to Laura's podcast episode and find all of the links there. So I know that this information is going to be so beneficial to the listeners of this show. I interact all of the time with the Animal Training Academy members and they're all well, they frequently, I should say, uh, showing and proudly showing their certificates from Fair Free. <laughs> uh, and there's a growing contingency of them uh, who have that now on their CV. So seize the moment, everyone, <laughs> and get involved. Oh, <laughs> and for those and for those in New Zealand, we will have so Fear Free. I will be over flying the fat flag for Fear Free at the APDT New Zealand conference this year. I know I, I have so KPA Ranch with Ken and then four days of listening to Ken at APDT, like what what could be better? So Fear Free will will be around um, at APDT if anyone's there and wants to ask me a little bit more. And talking about conversations being started, keep your ears peeled for Ken Ramirez on the Animal Training Academy podcast show coming in the very near future. Ah, so excited. 
That we did I to do be, that. I will be listening. <laughs> You're going to get home to your driveway, park your car, and then not have finished listening, and then just go for another short drive so you can finish, aren't you, Laura? Because that is actually something that uh, you do. I have been known to do that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I get to meet you at the APDT New Zealand conference. Yes, yeah, it'll be great. That is the best part of what I do is when we actually get to meet mm-hmm. each other. In yeah, person. yeah. Hey, everyone out there listening, get involved. We're going to move on, though, to another super exciting topic. There's three really exciting things from this podcast. We talked about IMDT. We talked about Fear Free. But we want to talk about now. Well, we don't want to talk about this. We want to geek out on this. We're going to talk about Laura's canine adventure course. Laura, what is this? And tell people about how it got started. Uh, Yeah, okay. My canine adventure course. Uh, So uh, like we chatted about earlier, I uh, have worked at the vet clinic for many years and we run lots of different training classes now uh, and I have oh, I, a huge a huge client base who um, are lovely lovely pet dog loving people who want to have fun with their dogs um, and I compete in a few you know I've done agility um, I've done a little bit of rally I've dabbled in a few doggy sports and, and had fun with it um, but I do know that you know um, especially for competitive dog sports there is you know a lot of time and effort and training involved um, to and, and a big commitment to, to do those sports uh, and so I found that there was this there was this little gap there that I had a lot of clients who were doing some you know some foundation training with me having a bit of fun and then kind of wanted to go onwards and upwards but didn't didn't feel that they were ready or or wanted to commit to to a competitive dog sport so I I came from a horsey background so my old horse Arnie uh, I did um, compete I, I did eventing with him many years ago and one of my favorite things was to do was called um, a hunter trial so pony clubs run them and it's just little obstacles little tests of skill um, around a course um, and um, it's all about working as a team you know um, as as you go around the course with your with your lovely little pony or horse that you're on so I kind of thought, well, maybe we could do something like this for dogs. So canine adventure course, what we have is we have between 15 and 20 obstacles um, laid out around a course. We hold it at a few different venues, but mainly like big grassed open area. So we kind of, you know, hire a local park. Uh, and the obstacles are all fun little things for them to climb on. So there's no big, scary, leapy, like cross country horsey obstacles. It's all little and low and fun. So we have hay bales, we have um, lots of little logs and ramps for them to walk on. We have a ball pit, which is always a favorite. Um, we'll often get out the agility equipment and have that really low. So the A-frame, like just off the ground, the dog walk right down low. So um, they can kind of have fun with it. Uh, so how we do it all of the dogs do it on lead treats are allowed you can have as many treats in that treat pouch as you like um, and so um, it's kind of suitable for dogs of any training level so they work around it uh, and get treats as they kind of explore and sniff and climb on all the different obstacles uh, it is non-competitive which is a big one that I, I was very passionate about because I think as soon as we put a first prize, a rosette, a ribbon on the line, um, the competitive side in people comes out a little bit. And sometimes that means that they may accidentally push their dog a little bit. Uh, and so instead I took that out of it. It's just about coming and, and having fun. Um, like they did back in pony club days, um, everyone gets a little completion rosette. So the dogs all get a really cute little rosette for coming and having fun. Um, which I think the rosette's more for the owners, but you know, it's cute. Um, and so we can have um, dogs going around the course. It's, I guess, if we think about like a confidence course for puppies, it's kind of a bigger version of that. Um, so they have lots of fun with it. Um, we run it at quite a few um, different venues now. So we did run it as a solo event first up. Um, we get, um, it becomes a real social group. People come along, um, you know, with their family, with friends and bring their dogs. Uh, and so they'll have a couple of go around the course, just dog and, and handler. And then the last one is like a little teams event. And again, we used to do this back in kind of pony club days where you would go with someone else. So they can go with, you know, their friend and their friend's dog and off they go around the course together um, and that always gets really cute photos you know a couple of little doggies climbing on the hay bales and jumping into the ball pit and and having fun um, 
So we did it as a solo event initially. Uh, now we've had quite a few um, local dog events contact us, um, so community events, uh, and ask if we'll run a little mini course uh, at their events. So they're lovely. They give us a little fenced area. We have some little obstacles. The dogs can come in and, again, climb on and play and, and have a bit of fun. Um, I really like it at the community events because, I, especially here in Perth, we're getting lots and lots of, you know, little kind of... Um, events where, you know, there's the little market stalls, people can walk around and look at dog related products and, and kind of have a chat and a wander. And it's great for the people. There's lots to look at, but sometimes there's not too much for the dogs to do. There may be, a, you know, we've done them before, you know, there's an agility demonstration or an obedience demonstration going on, but for the pet dog, they're just kind of mooching around. There's not much for them to really engage with. So I like that, that you know, we're giving this for them, that people can wander around and then the dogs can come in and, and have a bit of fun themselves as well. Uh, I've also now I've got, we have um, quite a lot of breed groups here in Perth. Uh, so they're real social groups. They meet up every couple of months and do some fun activities together. So I've had them book me out. They just book, you know, I am um, probably the, the cutest one. Oh my goodness. was the Westie Walkers of Perth. So I had, I think it was around, uh, I think it was 25, 30 little Westies all in a group doing an adventure course. And it, it was gorgeous. It was very, very cute. Um, and we, we have done over the school holidays, we've done a dogs and kids adventure course. So parents come, parents obviously hold the lead, but the kids get to go around with their um, dog and have fun. Um, the kids love climbing on the stuff just as much as the dogs. So, you know, they'll wander along the hay bales and dive into the ball pit with their dog and, and have fun. Um, then we have like a little um, tea and coffee station. So the parents and the dogs can have a little relax, you know, in a little shady spot. And then the kids come with me and I uh, usually have another staff member with me to help. Um, and we get the kids thinking about, um, doing some more fun things with their dogs. So we have an uh, enrichment um, station. It's basically art and craft. So uh, the last one we had egg cartons and cereal boxes and some doggy treats and they kind of made all of that for their dogs and um, they made a tuggy toy. We had some polar fleece and they all got a turn. They platted and made a toy for their dog. And I think it was, it was lovely. It was nice connecting with the younger generation. And again, we can connect with them. Then we're going to inspire that, that next generation of dog lovers and hopefully some dog trainers out there too. So it kind of sounds like a like a mini pro proception pro proception course. Yeah, yeah. A fun, <laughs> non competitive <laughs> pro proception course. Yes. Is that a, yeah, is it, yeah. is it, is it, is it a yeah. worth something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. It is having and it is. It's just come have fun, build some confidence, and um and and enjoy themselves. Cool. And so for for the people who might want to get involved. Mm -hmm. Here's the moment after listening to this show and who aren't, like myself, not necessarily into the competitive side of dog sports and, and just want to jump in there and uh, have as much fun as possible <laughs> and take my own <laughs> little rosy to home, no matter what <laughs> yes. happens. Yes, um, that's right. <laughs> what, what would you say the four biggest benefits that you've found? We're going with the number four today. No reason. Four? Yeah. No reason. Yeah. Yeah. What, are the, what are the four <laughs> biggest benefits that the people who have gone through you and, and learned about your canine adventure course? Uh, what's the feedback you've got? What are the four biggest benefits? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think, first of all, that it is a non competitive fun event. So there's something out there that they can do on a weekend with their dog that, you know, that's really fun and they can do it with friends. So I think that's probably the, the top of the list. Um, I think also the nice thing is that, especially at the community events, we engage the community and they come and have a bit of fun with their dog and they may not need a dog trainer services now, but, you know, the next door neighbours get a puppy or, you know, their auntie's got a dog that's, you know, showing some behavioural issues. And so I think it's a nice one to connect with the community and let them know that we're out there. Uh, and then if they do need us, they can connect. We can put them in touch with the right people that are going to give them the best advice. So I think that that is a nice one, connecting. Um, Educating the next generation, again, doing something fun with the kids. Uh, I think um, I've had quite a few kids now who come along and, you know, they've learned a little bit about body language and then they've come to another little course um, and they point out before everyone else does, you know, oh, his tail's down a little bit, mummy, you know, and, you know, um, or, you know, oh, did you see that lip lick? Uh, and they're amazing. Little kids are so observant. Once they know it, that they've got it. So I think um, educating that next generation is lovely. 
Um, and I think the last one, like I said, with the going to the community events, giving the dogs something to do. Um, there's always fun things for the people to look at and see and do. Um, but giving the dogs, you know, come in and just have some fun, no pressure, just come in and explore and enjoy yourselves. I think that's four. Yeah, non-competitive, engage the community and pick up some clients at the same time. Uh, yes. Educated in the next generation, super important. Did you see that lip lick, mummy? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the words we want on every child's lips. Yeah. Um, and giving the dog something to do. They're, they're pretty massive benefits uh, in my eyes. But I want to go to that second one, engaging the community uh, and mm-hmm. getting them thinking about dogs in a different way. Because that, that is something that I want to use the word movement again. I don't know if it's the right word. I'm going to explore this on my own time by myself. <laughs> but you know, as as our positive reinforcement community, that that's a big challenge that we once again challenge isn't the right word, but that's a potential strategy that we can employ and engage in that community and get into more mm-hmm. uh, interested in this stuff. So. That's huge, and I think that's something potentially, and I, I want to hear um, you put this in your own words, but I think that's something we can think about as a global community to, to kind of help us in, in spreading the message about positive reinforcement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. I think um, we have clients that seek us out, uh, which is which is wonderful, um, and more and more are seeking out, you know, that positive reinforcement, modern, fear-free, whatever words we want to, you know, label it today, um, that, you know, our, our, our training for philosophies and they're seeking us out. But um, we do still need to be planting seeds out in that community because not everyone is seeking out what we do. Uh, And so I think that doing things that just being out there and having and having fun with their dogs again we're we're engaging them um and um i i may not be able to completely change everyone's point of view um straight away but again just striking up conversation connecting planting a couple of little seeds i i think is is the way forward You've heard it here, everyone. Laura is going to change everyone's point of view, just not straight away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but engagement with the community seems like a, a very, very valuable conversation to continue moving forward. So thank you so much for sharing that, Laura. We are sadly nearly at the end of this episode, but what we like to do at this point is go full circle. We started off with, was it 23 years ago when you started yes. Morley? We started off when mm-hmm. you're 15 years old, t- t- learning yep. about puppies, falling in love with puppies. Bring us up to, we've been brought up to 2019 and all of the, the tremendous amount of exciting things and, and opportunities that you all have in the podcast audience to seize the moment with the IMDT, Fair Free, thinking about how we can engage the community. Maybe a canine adventure course would be the way to go about that. But let's look forward now, Laura, into the future. What, what do you want to see happen in the next five to 10 years in positive reinforcement, dog training, and go broader than this animal training world? I knew you were going to ask this question. It is a big one. <laughs> um, I, I guess really um, I want us to always be moving forward. Um, that, and it is great. We are, we're in such, we're in such a great place at the moment um, that things are moving forward, but we can't change everyone's opinion overnight. Uh, so I think um, inspiring that next generation, whether it be those kids, you know, coming along to a fun little adventure course, whether it be, um, you know, working with clients or, you know, onwards and upwards and presenting to vets or nurses, fellow trainers and, and spreading the word for what we do and, um, and planting those seeds. Um, because we may not be able to pick the fruit now, but we can get those, we can plant those seeds and, and keep doing that. And I think that I often see in our industry that we can get a little bit disheartened um, when we feel change isn't, isn't happening as quick as we would like. Um, but I, I always go back to I'm planting seeds. So I think that that, that is where we're at. Keep, just keep planting those seeds. We may not be able to pick the fruit now, but we can plant the seeds. I love it. And you say that sometimes you feel was that, re- like- was, that was that really cheesy? No, it was like <laughs> angels singing in the background. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am reminded uh, a lot of Susan Friedman's offering to celebrate approximations. Uh, and mm-hmm. is, does this kind of go along that same line? You, you mentioned there that sometimes people have that um, big goal in mind, but you know, even even just jumping on, even just listening to this podcast, that's an approximation towards lots of people's goals, isn't it? And sometimes we forget to celebrate that. Is is that the same thing or is it it slightly different than that? 
No, I, I think you're right, Ryan. I think we uh, um, celebrate the little wins. They are their, their little approximations, but we're, we're getting there. And so, so one thing I started doing is making a list every day of all the small approximations that I took during the day to reach towards my big goals. And it's really uh, been quite an interesting experiment that I've been doing in 2019. What are, what are some other things that you might have to offer the listeners of this show to, to help them remember to celebrate approximations? Oh, okay. Well, I guess, um, I don't know. I'm going to pull out, oh, I'm going to go take my dog trainer hat off and put my mummy hat on. So my little daughter, little Isla, she's going to be so happy if she hears this. I mentioned her instead of dogs all the time. Um, so, um, every night before she goes to bed, um, we talk about our, um, five favorite things of the day. So they can be tight, like little achievements we've done. Um, and I don't know, I think like you, you've written it down, you've found a way to reflect and go, these are the things I'm going to work on and then look back on it. Um, and I think that's, that's how I've, I've done it myself and, and little Isla at nighttime, we sit down and we talk about our five little things of the day that meant the most to us. Um, and so I guess for listeners fi- finding that way to, to reflect and look and, and that way you, you will see those changes. Yeah, I think you've just helped me approximate <laughs> and I'm going to celebrate this right now. Woo-hoo! Yes. You've, yes. You've, helped, you've helped me celebrate how I can make that list more, a more um, <laughs> sustainable long term because they actually get really long and and sometimes I'll be at the end of the day go, oh, God, I haven't made my new oh, website yet. Yeah. You know? God, why haven't I made my new website? Um, but the list is huge compared to all of those mm-hmm. things. So maybe I'm going to jot that yes. down to five favorite things. Uh, and yeah. you made me think about, you know, maybe I should have mentioned my wife so I'm not talking about dogs all day either. <laughs> Love you, Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thanks again so much for sharing everything today, Laura. That was so much fun. Before we do officially wrap up, I know we mentioned this towards the start of the episode, but can you please just remind everyone listening where they can go to find out more about you, all of the stuff we've talked about today, and get in touch? Yep, perfect. Thanks, Ryan. So I am on Facebook. By all means, find me, friend me, uh, mollyvetcenter.com.au, and then all of my contact info is through there. Uh, Exciting times for IMDT Australia in 2019. So that is imdt.com.au. For our IMDT um, family from over in the UK coming to visit and present over here, so we have John Wiggins, Sam Turner, uh, Steve man robert hewings and david bryce um all in australia uh for 2019 uh they will all be uh booked through 3bevents.com.au uh fear free go check out the trainers um info there so that is fearfreepets.com uh and um if you want to have fun doing some canine adventure courses um around the place um i have more info on that website which is canineadventurecourse.com Wonderful. And we will, of course, link to all of us in the show notes as well. As mentioned, this has been so much fun, Laura, from myself and on behalf of everyone listening, we really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show today. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me, Ryan. It's been a pleasure. Everyone listening, we, of course, appreciate all of you tuning in today as well. If you've enjoyed this episode as much as we've enjoyed making it and you are interested in carrying on the conversation about working with our animals in the most positive, funnest fear-free, choice-rich ways, then as mentioned at the start of the episode, the Animal Training Academy community is waiting for you. Head on over to www.animaltrainingacademy.com, click on the membership button in the main menu to learn more about what members are describing as the Netflix social media platform for behaviour geeks. There's something there for absolutely everyone. We're looking forward to having you join the tribe. Remember, seize the moment. That's it for this episode, though. We're going to wrap it up there. Thanks again, everyone, so much for listening. You'll hear from us again soon.